you're watching Keystone Science, and in today's video, we're going to teach you how to make your very own $5 taser. So let's go ahead and make it. I was searching around on Amazon and came across this little device. It was called a boost converter and only cost me a couple of bucks. So when I connect up the power from the 8.7 volts DC, you can see the little bit of a charge it gives. And this got me thinking, how could I use this to make a miniature portable taser? The supplies for this project is going to be really simple. You're going to need a soldering iron, some solder, a 9 volt battery that's dead, a 9 volt battery that's alive to power it, and a momentary switch. Also the uh, boost converter here. I got this out of a microwave oven, but the one you can use can be a much smaller momentary switch and it'll probably fit better because it's smaller. After cutting open a 9 volt battery, I took out the terminal end here and soldered two wires onto the back terminals. Now, the important thing to remember here is that the negative on this is going to wind up being your positive as the 9 volt battery fits in this way. And so, the positive is going to go into the negative, so that's why I put a red wire on what would normally be the negative, and on what would normally be the positive, I put a brown wire because that's going to be our negative when the 9 volt battery is connected up to it. So remember that, don't do it the opposite. On the boost converter here, we have four wires. So we're going to have a positive, which is denotated by the red wire, a negative, which is denotated by the green wire, and the two high voltage wires are going to be these shiny red wires here. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and take some wire. It doesn't have to be too thick because we're not dealing with a whole lot of current here, but go ahead and snip it in half. Let's go ahead and take that momentary switch, grab the wire, twirl it in your hand, and make sure you have a good solid connection to the tabs on the momentary switch. We're going to be soldering them. It's always a good important thing to have though, a solid connection before you make a soldering connection. All right, so now that we have those good solid connections, we're going to go ahead and take these helping hands here and plop this guide right on there, just like that, and make sure it's all tightened down. Uh, there we are. Okay, so now go ahead and take your soldering iron, apply a little let it get hot right there on the tip and go ahead and touch the solder straight to the metal and if you heat up the metal the solder will want to jump towards the heat as you can see we now have the wire soldered onto that momentary switch the next duration is going to be using a hot glue gun so go ahead and get that plugged in and warmed up as we talk about what we're going to do alright so the wiring is going to go like this we're going to go from the red wire over here to one of the momentary switch wires it doesn't matter which one you go to because It'll act the same way on both ends. Then from the momentary switch, we're going to be going to the other red wire that we did previously for the 9 volt battery connector. And the brown wire for the 9 volt battery connector is going to go straight to the green. Go ahead and add some heat shrink tubing onto this or regular electrical tape will work fine. Right, we've got the circuit all taped up now, so now what we're going to want to do is go ahead and wind up all the excess wire into here. You don't want to be cutting it short because if you cut it short and then you run out of wire, it's going to be pretty hard to rewire it into that boost converter there if you run out of wire. So for that reason, you want to keep as much excess wire as you can laying around. There are two things you can do. You can lay this flat against here and add some hot glue on it to hold it on, or you can even just wrap a strand of electrical tape around that. The other reason that I'm putting the electrical tape on is that because I don't intend for this to be permanent and I'll want to change it up a bit later. So it's better if you're prototyping out something like this to go ahead and put electrical tape to hold it rather than the hot glue because that will make it less permanent. So as you can see, we have that momentary switch snugged up against it. The next thing you're going to want to do is take some hot glue and attach this 9 volt battery terminal onto the end there, but tuck all the wires into that open crevice you have there. Alright, I've got all the wires glued into place and it still kind of looks a bit messy, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap some of this in electrical tape and see if I can get it looking sleeker. I put it all into place and attached a battery to the end, and as you can see when we click the little button here, this project is excellent because of how small it is, and when you're storing it, you can go ahead and take off that 9 volt battery so that it's safer to keep in your pocket. This is going to be excellent for you if you want a nice way to protect yourself, but that's small and incognito. You can just slip this in your pocket and nobody would be able to tell the difference. Now, if you're like me and you don't want to pay for a whole bunch of 9 volt batteries, they can get quite expensive. What I have here 
are rechargeable 9 volt batteries that I bought off of Amazon. They didn't cost me that much, I'd say uh, they were like $21 for 4, plus it came with a charger, which is a really good deal. So for your homemade taser here, that means when it's out of batteries, you just go ahead and take this off, put it in the charger, grab one that's already charged since it comes with 4, and reconnect it up and you're ready to go. Despite being so small, this thing really packs quite a bunch. This thing is sure to deter off anyone who tries to attack you. And so, if you want a nice, easy, cheap $5 taser, there you go.